Hi, thanks for joining us today. Here at the Disability Hub MN, we want to make sure you have information and resources that you need to help you live your best life your way. And today we've invited Paige with Mad Hatter Wellness to join us to talk about how Mad Hatter can help you identify and foster healthy relationships. So first, let's start with introductions. I'm Marcy and I work with the Disability Hub. I'm a woman with brown hair that I'm wearing up today. I have glasses and I'm wearing Disability Hub colors of a mustard yellow sweater, and a dark teal shirt. Paige, would you introduce yourself and let everyone know your role with Mad Hatter? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I am Paige Lasota. I am a woman with brown hair and uh, kind of see-through glasses, wearing a white top, and my background is a tan wall. Um, I'm a sexuality for all abilities educator and developer at Mad Hatter Wellness. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Before we jump into the information, there's a couple of things for you to know about today's event. Uh, we want to make sure, please, that you don't ask questions that are specific to you and include your personal information. This is a live public event and we want your information to stay private. If you have specific questions about your personal situation, please send an email to the hub or contact us via phone or chat. During the event, we'll also be putting links to information in the comments. We've linked some resources in the comments of this video, as well as contact information if you have questions for Paige or um, anyone at Mad Hatter Wellness. And with that, uh, let's get started. Let's start with Paige. Can you can you share a bit of information about Mad Hatter Wellness? Yeah, absolutely. So Mad Hatter Wellness is an organization based in Minnesota, founded by Katie Thune in 2013, with the vision of a world that provides and promotes equitable health and wellness education for all people. Uh, we have two primary programs, the Power of Me and the Sexuality for All Abilities program. So we create comprehensive, healthy relationships and sexual health education programming that educates, trains, and empowers people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their support systems. That's amazing. I can't wait to find out more. Uh, I guess my first question is, why is it important to have conversations about sexual health and safe relationships? Yeah, it's so important and essential to have those conversations. Um, all people of all abilities deserve inclusive and comprehensive education and discussions when it comes to these topics. And we need to build that knowledge and empower individuals to make safe and informed decisions. You know, those repeated conversations just normalize these topics and reinforce messages and strategies that help people navigate this huge aspect of life. Um, you know, sexuality is so much more than we think. It's about all kinds of relationships, uh, friendships, romantic relationships, familial relationships. It's about boundaries and consent, gender and sexual orientation, body image. And then of course, the stuff that we think about, the love and affection and reproductive body parts and health. And unfortunately, people with disabilities are commonly denied access to this education, these topics, and are seen as unable or undeserving. And when anyone is denied this right, their whole well-being is negatively affected. Um, so, though we know that people with disabilities are sexual beings, and those all those facets of sexuality that I mentioned earlier truly applies to everyone, no matter cognitive or physical ability. So we want to really empower and increase that knowledge and um, let people have body rights and body autonomy and self-determination and advocacy. Um, Another really important part that we, or important reason that we have these conversations is we are aware of the extremely high rate of sexual assault against people with disabilities mm -hmm. and want to prevent that and lower that by giving people the tools to recognize if something's unsafe, um, communicate no, tell a trusted adult, 
And of course, continue these conversations among support professionals too, as it takes a very holistic approach. Wow. <laughs> the expansive, tremendous reasons to have these conversations. Um, that's, thank you. I'm blown away um, by that by that bit of information. So um, looking at the fact that Mad Hatter has this holistic approach, is there an age group that that you at Mad Hatter serve? Yeah, you know, we actually serve individuals of all ages. Okay. Um, our sexuality ability or our sexuality for all abilities curriculum is used in middle schools, high schools, um, transition programs and more. Uh, we often partner with community organizations that serve adults of all ages, such as group homes or social orgs. Um, but a lot of our educational tools can be used with even younger people um, or even working on a little one's curriculum meant for pre-K to second grade. Um, and then we also have a parent and caregiver education specialist on our team who works with parents of people of all ages. Um, from little ones to adults as well. Wow. Okay. So talking about the families and professionals, when do you all suggest that um, as, as families and professionals that we should start having conversations about these he healthy relationships and sexual health? Yeah, we say it's never too early. Um, having conversations about healthy relationships and our bodies can start as soon as possible. The education and discussion piece is truly a lifelong process. Um, and it doesn't even have to be big, very intentional moments, even just modeling consent in natural everyday circumstances with young children can make such an impact. Um, and we know that these conversations are truly helpful, not harmful. There is a lot of fear about these topics, mm -hmm. um, but in fact, studies show that um, young people who do receive this education and have these conversations have healthier outcomes and even delayed sexual experiences. Mm. As a parent of four, I'm kind of wishing I would have had you along with me throughout <laughs> throughout their their young adults and teenage years and earlier because I'm seeing how this is a really helpful and great information so I I really don't want to talk about unhealthy relationships but they we know they exist what are some of the common signs of an unhealthy relationship and for that matter what are common signs of a healthy relationship yeah so we know that relationships are complicated. We often say that relationships are kind of like a puzzle. Um, and there are five main pieces that make up a healthy relationship or an unhealthy relationship. So we actually have a little tool called the heart of relationships um, that kind of easily portrays these different pieces to help understand what really makes up a healthy or unhealthy relationship. Um, so what a healthy relationship takes is um, getting to be yourself, so feeling accepted by the other person or people, um, that you don't have to hide any piece of yourself. Um, also, taking time to get to know each other. We know that mm -hmm. you don't meet someone and then the next day or next week, you're best friends with them or they're your romantic partner. It takes a lot of time um, to spend with them and to get to know them. Um, another sign is that there's compromise. So there's shared power in relationships. Um, you can make turn or you can take turns making decisions. Another piece of a healthy relationship is that you get along and have fun together. Um, of course, in healthy relationships, you don't always get along and that's okay. You just want to make sure that most of the time you're having fun, you're getting along, and that if you do have conflict, you can resolve it respectfully. And then that last one that we say is boundaries are respected. So that comes from both sides. Someone can say yes, or someone can say no, and that answer is respected. Um, thinking about an unhealthy relationship would kind of be reversing those pieces of the healthy relationship. So thinking about um, not being able to be yourself. So pieces of your identity are shamed or not accepted. Um, 
maybe there's not shared power, there's not that compromise. Someone's always controlling the other person or making all of the decisions. Um, and then that piece of getting along, there's just too much conflict, too many arguments that just can't be resolved. Um, and then that boundaries piece, that someone's not respecting someone else's boundaries regularly um, or it's making a big impact. And then, of course, any kind of violence or abuse would be a big sign of an unhealthy relationship. Of course, of course. And in my background, you will see that Todd the cat is um, absolutely enthralled with all of this information. Um, and he has prompted me to ask again, what is the heart called? Yes, it is called the heart of relationships. Okay, so it, it looks it is that heart, that Valentine shaped heart, yes. uh, perfect season for this, divided up into those four corners, if you will. That's that's a really helpful tool, an easy way to remember how to um, to mark those characteristics of a, of a healthy, good, healthy relationship. That's amazing. So um, on, to, on to our next question. If someone wanted to start a healthy relationship, whether that be platonic or romantic, what would some of the first steps that they would take be? Yeah, making new friends or even um, starting a new romantic relationship is not always easy. Sometimes it can take a lot of work or even require us to step outside of our comfort zone at times. So when establishing these new relationships, it's important that we think about safety. So for example, making a friend in an online chat room might not be the safest way to make a friend. So it can be helpful to just start with a goal, um, like make a friend, make a new friend, or be more social, um, then come up with some action steps. So maybe think about a safe place where you could meet someone. Maybe there's a social club um, in your neighborhood uh, maybe you go to school and you could sit with someone new at lunch. Um, and then thinking about those pieces of a healthy relationship that we just reviewed, um, you could ask questions about that person when you're talking to them and continue to get to know them. Um, and then as things continue, just really practice that consent, practice those boundaries. Another piece of establishing a new relationship, you might want to think about things that are blocking you from succeeding. So do you have some fear? Um, do you feel shy? So thinking about what's blocking you and then thinking about some strategies that could help you succeed. So could you use some positive self-talk? Do you have a trusted adult or friend that could support you? Um, things like that. So creating some goals and action steps and keeping that safety and healthy relationships pieces in mind. Makes perfect sense. And some really good reminders as we shift from maybe being isolated at home a little mm -hmm. more to being out in the public with mm -hmm. um, COVID changing our, our uh, perspective and our approaches. Uh, so you, you mentioned positive self-talk, which is kind of this nice uh, segue, I think, into my next question. As, as you can see, Todd continues to hang out and hang on every word that Paige is sharing with us. So um, that's, that is pretty amazing. So the shift that I'd like to take with this next question, to shift from external relationships to um, a relationship with self, how can people create a healthy relationship with themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we need to remember that we have relationships with ourselves that we need to tend to and foster. And a few tips that we share, and one actually that I wanted to bring up was that positive self-talk. Yeah. Um, so using that to increase self-esteem and your mood. Um, in our classes, we actually encourage participants to write some affirmations on a post-it note. So something that you're proud of or that you love about yourself um, and write it on a post-it note, like I'm creative or I'm smart, I'm beautiful and stick it somewhere that you're gonna see it, like your bathroom mirror or your nightstand, just so that you can see it every day and remind yourself of um, what you love about yourself. So that's definitely a strategy that we encourage is that positive self-talk. 
Um, another thing that we like to share is bringing mindfulness um, and a time for calm into your days. So just remembering to take deep breaths. Um, we often use this breathing ball that I have here. So this is a strategy that we learned from Yoga Calm to take breaths. Um, and it's just a great tactile and visual tool. And to do that really, and you don't even have to have the ball with it, you could use your hands. There's lots of other strategies for taking deep breaths, um, but just taking a deep breath in and out and repeating that, or just taking any time in your day to have that mindfulness um, is definitely a strategy that I think of. Um, another thing that I think about um, to create a healthy relationship with yourself is respect. So we talk a lot about respecting others, but we also want to think about respecting ourselves. So um, the way I think about that is staying true to your boundaries. So really think about how you want to be treated, um, what you're comfortable with, what feels safe to you. So really diving into that and what's unique to you and then communicating that and sticking with it. So awesome. Yes. I tend to be the one who goes towards those deep breathing. And I, I love the visual of, of the ball, especially because I love bright colors and that ball <laughs> is amazing. So that, that visual will stay with me as I practice my mindful deep breathing every day. If people had just one key takeaway from our conversation today, what would you want it to be? Yeah, I would say that the big takeaway is that everyone has the right to safe and healthy relationships. Um, and then also that you're not in this alone, whether you are a person supporting people with disabilities, a parent, a professional, maybe you're a self-advocate with a disability, that you're not in this alone. Um, there's lots of people here to help you, um, that healthy relationships and sexual health can be a really complicated topic. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a lifelong process and we're all learning, we're not perfect. Um, yeah. That's, uh, Paige, I am totally, truly blown away by all the information that you shared with us today, a wealth of knowledge. I can't wait to learn more about Mad Hatter. Um, hopefully everyone will join me in, in checking out your services and, and sharing, uh, sharing that they're available. But our time is up for today. And we are so, so truly grateful for your time today and Todd the cat where he's still hanging out with us. Um, and for those of you watching, if you thought this video was helpful, please share it with your friends. Uh, if, you, if you want more information about Mad Hatter Wellness, check out the links in the comments. Also, if you think this video was helpful and you want to see more like it, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you want to see. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Paige. It was great talking with you today. Thank you so much for having me. As an agency, we work with all um, all types of folks. So we work with people with disabilities, all disabilities. There's no limitations based on you know eligibility. Um, we work with people who support disabilities as well as providers um, who provide services. And we are a free statewide resource. So we are absolutely 100% free. And you can call us anytime, chat with us on the phone. Uh, or email us. We are available Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. Otherwise, we will get back to you in the next business day. Our number is 1-866-333-2466. And you can find us on the website, www.disabilityhubmn.org. So thank you so much for, for uh, being here, and we will look forward to seeing you next time.